Hello everybody, welcome to Live Scribbles with Jonathan. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And if you guys are on Patreon, thank you so much. Uh, I'm actually going to be um, posting, uh, tomorrow will be, what is it, October. And uh, October means a fresh new month. So I will be posting a free commission done through raffle. Um, so what that is, for those of you that aren't, aren't familiar, and if you wanted to get in tonight, I guess, those would be the people that are in the room today. Uh, if you guys are on uh, a subscriber, I guess, to my uh, Patreon account, uh, whatever monetary value you put in to support gets you entered into the raffle, which is a chance to get uh, an original piece of art uh, that I'll be drawing, uh, pencil, ink, all that good stuff, and I'll mail it out to you guys. So if you're interested in that, by all means, head on over to Patreon and uh, check that out. And if uh, you already are on Patreon, that's cool too. Um, hopefully you guys can uh, <laughs> be one of the lucky ones to get, get that piece for yourself. So today, what we're going to work on, uh, we're not going to be working on Daredevil. This was just for the pre-show here. But uh, what we're going to work on is I thought I'd carry on with where we left off uh, last week with uh, Finian. Uh, the character for Castle Dracula. Uh, we still were working on some of the designs for him. And uh, I'm just going to push a little bit more just to show you guys really just the workflow that I like to work on when I'm doing character design. And uh, I know it's not for everybody. Some people, they like to just sit down. And um, I actually was reading some of the comments and private messages from the last show. And guys, wow. Um, character design, man, it it's... It's flavor of the week stuff, man. Some people like it a certain way. Some people like it a different way. But I have noticed that people just like watching process and stuff. So hopefully, even if you don't really like doing this much, I don't even say work, but this much stuff to get a character design done, that's cool. Like I was just about to say, a lot of people, they like to just grab a piece of paper, draw, one shot, boom, there's your character. Excuse me. And there's uh, there's really, I don't want to say there's nothing wrong with that, but it's all preference, right? So let's get into some drawing here. So we're not going to be talking all day. So let's close this guy up. So I've already got this uh, file all set up, and I just wanted to quickly run over. Let me just zoom out here. Uh, where we were here, okay? So this is where we left off. We were kind of going around with some designs, trying to think, you know, what did we like, what didn't we like, and, and aspects of that. And uh, I liked certain elements of these and we combined it into another one. And uh, what's really cool about doing design, and this is one thing that I will say is a plus, personally, for doing this sort of thing, is uh, unless you have your character 100% ironed out in, I guess, script form or however else, most likely you'll come up with backstory or um, character traits and flaws by doing sketches, right? Um, but when you sit down to do a bunch of these character designs, a lot of elements can come in that uh, sort of save you that time and trouble and kind of get you going in a different direction. And what we ended up going with, so far anyway, and I, I dig it, I think it's going to add so much of the character, um, is making him blind. I guess, actually, it's kind of funny playing in with the, the Daredevil that we drew a little earlier. Um, so there's that, and I thought that was really cool. And that was just by adding, if you look at... Uh, Design D, it was, um, I forget where we were going to go here. It was sort of like there's a Mortal Kombat Scorpion Sub-Zero look here at E. Uh, but it started to feel a little, I don't know, didn't feel right. Uh, D was just way too much going on. Makes He looks really villainous. But uh, that, that eye, or that headband covering his eyes uh, felt really good. So we went with that. And this is where we ended up with just sort of tightening up one of those designs that we had, okay? And all I'm going to do now is I've just done the exact same thing. We're just going to copy and paste. Um, one thing you might notice, and this might get a little a little hairy with some of you, but if you look, the, I, I don't want to say the art's tight, but it's, it's definitely tighter than it was. And when you're adding different elements to this or, or taking away, it can start to get a little bit more... Um, uh, less creative I'll say only because the light the li the line art tends to be a little bit more tight right like in this stuff here it's so loose that a lot of its guesswork so adding and subtracting is actually very very easy when, when the more refined you get the harder it is to make those big big changes so in saying that think of this sort of stuff here as your big shapes design and silhouette these are your big ideas and then as we whittle them down where we're at right now now we can start working about little details and little designs and that's what we'll be doing today and again this is for comic book work so it's up to you when you're doing your own designs how much work in the design you want to put in because you have to draw these characters over and over again panel to panel and generally most people don't like drawing heavily detailed characters over and over again so what I'm going to do Let's just get our brush here. I'm just going to work in black and white 
for now. Black's still going to pop over this, and white will as well. Uh, from here, we will go to like a, a final rendered one. And what I'm hoping to do tonight, guys, is I, as you can notice, I've only got three here that we're going to do. I'm not going to spend too, too much time on it, maybe a, a half hour, um, just getting some designs down with these guys. So that's about 10 minutes of pop, I'm hoping. Uh, and then I can sort of get the tight line work in there, tightish, more similar to this, uh, so that we can worry about color, because I wanted to talk about color for a little bit. Uh, I think that's a whole other subject and topic that I, I don't even, I can't really address that well because I'm still learning it myself but it'll be it'll be fun to do so before we get into that let me just I'm gonna highlight all these guys and I'm going to lower their opacity down whatever Th this is fine and the reason for this is now when I draw with black or white um, it's definitely gonna pop over these characters because they're they're like a light gray right now I'm not I'm not competing with anything uh, right so I can draw with black like this I can bring in white and see how I can like remove shapes and design okay and that's the, the general flow that, that we're going to uh, going to address with these other ones here. And um, I was looking at some reference before the show uh, from some of my favorite comics and video game art books just to see what other people are doing. Uh, I've talked about swiping before, <laughs> swiping designs from people. Uh, you know, take that for what it's worth. I wouldn't copy totally, but it's cool to see something that you might not think of, like cloth or, or shoulder pads, you know, things that uh, I'm definitely going to want to add into this character. So for this one, I'm going to change up this sort of area right here. Um, I, I, you know, I, I do like where we were going last week with this, like, metal-shaped, uh, what would it be called? Um, I always forget what this is, like a girdle sort of thing. Um, and the, the more I was just thinking about it throughout the week is I think this would be more appropriate for uh, Gildas. And um, I'm actually going to do another one of these sort of things with him, um, with you guys, because the design and everything is sort of coming together as it's all kind of going. And I want Gildas to be a little bit more armored up. And Pillow, Pillow Head in the chat's excited about the... Um, the shoulder pads, which is good. Uh, Matador is uh, saying, uh, working at 300 DPI, in case you make the book, you can add this into extras. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I believe it's 300 DPI. Let's take a look. Yep, I don't know the size. That this, the, it's, it's a big file. It, it'll be fine. But yes, yes, thank you. So I wanted to bring this here just to give it more cloth. I'm going to rip this up a bit just to... Hopefully give him the, the feels that he's had a little bit more action, you know? Just erase some of this up here. And actually, I should have said this as well. Let me just, I'm going to merge these three copies here. That way I can just grab them all at once. And uh, what we can do as well, this is probably a little bit smarter instead of drawing in white all the time, is you can just erase it. Right, it's like things we're not gonna see. Bang! Look at that. It's, it's easy. It's not. It's not, <laughs> not a lot of work. I, I wouldn't put too much thought into how to sort of do this. It's more uh, a, the the point is supposed to be a little bit more of uh, why you're doing this. Uh, again, I I find that it's just a little bit more liberating in a way to get like to start pulling designs out of your head that you might not normally get to in another way, you know. So let's kind of give a little bit of a design here. I I want uh, movement in my characters with this stuff, and by adding things like this, uh, if you're doing superheroes, capes. There's a reason why there's capes. Uh, I don't know how much of this reason there was back in the day when they were first there, besides just looking cool. Uh, but I have to imagine there's a, there's there was a, a big reason. Uh, for me personally, uh, like things like capes and stuff, it just adds so much motion in a static image that it's it's very um, it's worth your time to be looking into stuff like that. So again, I wanted to carry out uh, a lot of this cloth and stuff like that. Uh, I might actually just armor up this part here because like if you look at his hood right now there he has like that armor trim which was part of the girdle area and I just removed all of that um, but I want to bring it back in at least so that there's like some of it uh, in here and this is uh, just design in general where you have like recurring shapes or recurring design 
if you can uh, get it in there, that that's that's great. Um, and the other thing too is why I wanted to have some of these cloth areas as well. Is he can hide more of those knives in these in these places as well, right? And James is saying that it covers some anatomy. Yeah, <laughs> less to draw. There you go. <laughs> so we're in here, and I'm, I'm thinking I want to have like a maybe a little bit of like a belt or something in here, or a couple belts. Multiple belts usually look cool. Uh, maybe this is holding stuff together uh, underneath there. Okay, so we've got this here. What's that? the armor? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> maybe we can actually bring the trim back here as well. And this stuff's got to wrap around, so we're going to have to put it behind his legs as well, back there. We can erase the back of his cape. We're not going to really... Uh, we're not going to see that. All right. And so I guess there's one other thing I could say. You could go this far with that. Like that's enough of a, a, a change where if you put these guys next to each other, you see like it's a subtle change. And this is how you can continually do this. Um, and in production, like video game work and movies and stuff as well, this is really how it goes. Uh, where it's your, your art director, if you're not, most chances you're not the only one making all the decisions. But you'll send this sort of stuff out. And hopefully, well, eventually, regardless, what's going to happen is the design will start to get tight. And we'll say, like, this design here is what they want. But what they want is it's just, it, it, it's not there yet. Nobody really knows why. Maybe you don't know why when you're drawing this stuff. You're not sure, right? And the, all it is is this kind of stuff. It's just going in there and adding little things. You might, like, you know, right now, I already know uh, what I'm going to work on here is, like, a, a gauntlet. Right? And I might not like the, the design of it, but maybe I only want one, even though I'm going to draw two on him here. Okay, that doesn't work like that. This breaks at the wrist. Right, and uh, I believe I said it last week, and if I didn't, I'll, I'll say it again here. I try not to rush this stuff. You know, like coming back a week later, or maybe not that long, but like a day later or, or anything like that that can give you fresh eyes when you're coming back is, is actually really huge because you're going to notice things that you, you might not have seen before, right? And if you've been working all day, <laughs> coming into this stuff and trying and expecting to have like great designs and making the, 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 the best or sound choices, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. To hope for that necessarily. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so sometimes what I'll do is, you know, like I'm, I'm like a lot of you guys. Like I come home from work, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. I don't. I, as much as I love drawing, I don't want to draw. You know. Um, so I might hammer out a little bit of stuff like this. You know, like this production work I like to call it. Or, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, not not production, but um, concept phase of your project. You know, as long as you've got that time available, you may as well use it so that when the weekend comes or if you've got a little bit more free time, right, you can totally just, you can take a critical look at the designs and uh, see if you like them. Conceptual. Thank you. Conceptual. That's, that's, that's what I was trying to say. So I guess uh, other than that, just from this preaching talk I'm doing right now, how are you guys doing? How's your projects going? Are you guys working on any projects? Are you, are you taking a break? What's going on with you guys? Um, for the mini comic anyway, it's uh, going along. I'm actually really excited to work on it. The script is pretty much done the first pass or whatever. Um, and I, I will be putting some stuff on Patreon soon for some production work for you guys to check out. Uh, Frost, oh, I'm going to butcher your name now, pal, sorry. Frosted, Frosted Ice Art. Wow, see, talking about <laughs> long days. Uh, he's asking, does his character need hooks on his gauntlets to help him hold the high ground? Um, see, and those are really cool design choices, too, that you can really work on. Um, you know, like putting little like hooks on here and stuff like that are, are pretty cool. Like right away, that could be, you know, the weapon that he has. He doesn't have knives. It's like these wrist hooks. Or it could be practical things. 
like uh, Frosted Ice is saying, you know, uh, these are all, and that's why I recommend you guys do this stuff. Even if you like, if, if you don't like working on a computer, if you have access to a photocopier, or if you don't, you can light box stuff using a window in the sun. You just hold a piece of paper up, put a piece of paper over top of it, as long as there's sun out there, or a light, it's basically a light box. You can always do this sort of stuff, and I recommend it, uh, especially if you're working on your own stuff, because of that, you get to ask yourself questions that I don't normally ask myself when I'm writing. I'm going to give this guy a little like mohawk area too here maybe. Let's see how we like that. Alright, so this will be the first one. So we can just pull that back. And you can notice too when I like up the, uh, what's it called, the opacity again. A lot of the design now is there and we can go in and we can um, knock out a bunch of, or fill in like gray. And the only reason I'm using gray here, again, for those that uh, don't remember from last week, is uh, because it's it's very easy to separate forms that way uh, for your eye without having to ask too much of yourself uh, in, in that regard there. Um, Metador is saying, so some people just this type of stuff for living get paid well. Eh? Uh, this is huge. There's This is concept art. That's exactly what this is. People that do it way better than I do, obviously, but... Um, this is a, a demanding job. The, the, I would follow Fang Zhu on YouTube if you guys aren't already. Concept artists are all over the place. There's, It's very hard to become, I don't want to say become one, but get a job as one because it's so saturated. And, and, and a lot of people pr like it, you know. You're, you're asked to create something that doesn't exist. And that's that in and, in and of itself is such a challenging task that uh, that's why it's there, right? There's a difference between drawing stuff that's cool and designing. And I didn't really know much until, per honestly, until I've uh, started listening to Fang Zhu just talk about uh, design process and stuff. But yeah, there's definitely people that do this. Uh, he has an, Here's an example that he might do. So let's just say a, a page like this, but there'd be maybe 15 of this character. And you'd just say you're doing a 9 to 5. So you'd have the sketches done. This stuff here. You would have these done probably within an hour or two. right? And then you would go from here to where we're going right now before lunch. And then the rest of the day, you would pick like two or th I would probably say like four, maybe four to six that you really like, and you would polish those suckers up. You know, and that's just characters. There's environments and all sorts, all sorts of stuff. You know, design, design, design. No, no, we're gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna toss a shoulder pad on here now. Let's, let's do a shoulder pad. Let's do one. So one thing I am thinking of here is it, it's um, I think for me anyway it's hard to expect because I don't get it very often uh, a great necessarily design on the first pass so like this shoulder pad like I'm just putting shapes here and I don't even know if I really like it right you could literally do this a bunch of times just finding out um, what shape of shoulder pad you like or what looks good right. You can do a whole page of shoulder pads, and that's where you gotta, you have to kind of know how much time you have, uh, and and hope that your study, and what what's called your visual library, starts to come in big time for that sort of stuff. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put like a little shape. Um, I've seen this from Joe Mad. I know it's in uh, Blizzard artwork as well, where they put kind of like a skull or a face into these into. Uh, into the armor and stuff. So we can kind of have like a little bit of a face. I'm not sure if we'll keep it, right? Let me just bring this stuff up here. I'll bang it up a bit. I don't want this to look like it's perfect. And maybe, uh, I'm just looking at this, where can this tie in? Uh, so a lot of times there's a lot of straps. We, there's an interesting instra interesting shape we can do. Uh, you see how we've got his cape going this way? We can get like an opposing shape that way as well. And opposing lines tend 
to create interest. I'm going to put it there. This would wrap around his body. And we can get a little bit more like tech in there. And actually, maybe, you know what? And this is where it gets a little dangerous. Because the more of this stuff you add, the more like heavy armor it can look, right? And it starts bulking the character up. So, you got to be a little carefree. A little carefree. What a day. Wow. Uh, Millennium Matador is saying uh, console target sounds like a dream job. Uh, it's it's one of the uh, I if I could I, my ideal job would either be concept art or comic book art, and it's so like I find so many parallels between the two. So it's uh, I love this. This is why if you guys have been following my channel for any period of time, go back and hear how many ideas I come up with for comics that who knows how good or bad they are. Most likely they're just going to be nobody would really remember them in the long term long term right it's just comics it's just some guy doing comics that i that i think are fun right but this is the stuff that i love to do so much that this is why i, I it, it's hard for me to stick with the project because once i get to this stage here this is where i get i i have the most fun because now they start telling me a story this sort of stuff right like now these characters are are talking to me i'm starting to feel uh a purpose for them, like why they're, why they're even important, why the story is worth telling at all, and it's it's addicting. It's actually very addicting to me, anyway. I know some people. Again, this might be new to you guys doing this sort of stuff. Might not ever have thought of it. You know, like if you're doing a superhero book, you might have just drawn a guy Superman style, right? And give them a unique color palette and bang there you go you're, you're done you know uh donald uh, peace out guys uh, i'll be doing i'll be coming in one of the streams i don't know why but the new picard design just creates lag for me well sorry about that donald um yeah hopefully you can watch the recordings bud and i hope uh i hope i don't know <laughs> I hope it doesn't lag. Is it lagging for anybody else, or is this Donald was uh, one of the? Okay, uh, let me just scroll up here because I'm pretty sure there is another. Millennium Man was saying, uh, got about five main characters to get their looks down. I already designed the hero in costume, but never really out of costume. Street clothes. So that's my next step. There you go. Right. That's that's another thing too, man. Is just going back and like, what is? And this is why <laughs> this job needs to exist because some people, right? Like, okay, so what do average people look like when they're walking around? What's the politics? What's the government? What's the? What do the poor people look like? What do the rich people look like? That's why you usually have more than one person designing things, <laughs> right? And that's like the scope. Um, or if you're doing superheroes, right? Like, that's why a lot of superheroes, if you ask me, uh, from a concept standpoint, like, a lot of superheroes and stuff, they're all done in, like, today. Bec and it's easy because whenever you do a story of today, uh, besides fashion, which you can grab, like, a, a magazine anywhere, it's, you know, it's today. You're, you're living in today. So a lot of the reference is done for you, right? You can look around, and when you draw a phone, everybody understands what a phone looks like. So if you wanted to get a little more tech with it, we still understand it. But if somebody was to ask you, like, draw a dragon, well, there's typical dragons, but maybe you wanted to make like a glass dragon or a dragon made of mist, a mist dragon, or maybe you want like a mushroom dragon. What do these things look like, right? Um, and that's where, you know, we come in. That's why, that's what I like looking about or looking at comics where is when you start seeing these fresh ideas and once they're in a story, they're alive, right? And I don't know, I find that stuff very fascinating. Um... <laughs> All right, so in this design here, what I might do... Okay, good, you guys aren't having lag. Okay, cool. Sorry, Donald. Matador, concept art, storyboarding, comic work, even light puppet animation. He loves all of it. All very creative stuff, all story-driven stuff. Millennium Man is saying, I'm glad I get used to doing concept art during animation class. It's a fun process, at least for me. So many ideas come out of it. It's good to hear. So I'm trying to draw this guy's hand back in. Maybe just on this side here. Alright, maybe we 
we can bring in a little bit more shoulder pad action up here and again playing with the bracer stuff this is a little more classical bracer Maybe we can break up the design just a little bit Feels like it might be out of something from like Berserk or something. Uh, Arpa Payton, hey Jar, I got an A on geography tests in Canada. Oh, good job. Probably do better than I would. <laughs> uh, bum, bum, bum. What are we going to do here? Uh, yeah, right. I didn't like these bandanas because uh, Gildas has two things. Gildas has his hair, looks like this. With the massive chin or whatever. He's got the headband and his hair all gets slicked back. It comes out like this, Fabio looking. But he's got two stripes, strips of hair that come down like this. So I figured if I did, um, what's it called? Add these bandanas, tethers, you know, to that, it would feel a little bit more. Uh, I don't know. It, it would just they they would start to feel like they'd have similar qualities there that I'm not sure that I that I definitely that I really want. Uh, okay, so what can we do here? Maybe we can we'll put a second layer. So he's starting to feel really armored up, and I'm not really sure if I dig that. But that's that's the point of all this here, right? Right now I'm just kind of throwing lines around to see if, if any stick, anything that points out. Yeah, I kind of like that actually. So we put these pieces here and then we can get... These to dangle there. Just to break this area up a little bit. Uh, what's this? Uh, he's looking a bit like skeleton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a little skull in here. A little the worst skull ever. There we go. That skeleton. Uh, John, take it all away, but the shoulder pad. This pillow head is diehard shoulder pad. <laughs> Arva Payton, uh, Jar, will Castle Dracula be monthly once you get it going? Ooh, good question. Uh, most likely not. I don't know what my, my um, turnaround time will be. I, I honestly don't. I'm not, a, I'm not a very fast artist, especially when it comes to comic book work. I tend to slow down. Uh, but I, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing with this just set. Uh, I, I'm more than sure. Like, this is for the mini comic, but it's going to be done at a resolution that can be printed at, like, a normal comic book. But I also like the idea of, you know, manga size as well as web comic, right? So I'm not sure just just yet. You know, I still got a little bit of time to decide that. Uh, either way, I do enjoy the idea of putting this online for free as, like, the web comic sort of thing. I'm not sure what level that would get to. And then, like, printed books later and stuff. I'm not sure. Not too sure. What do you guys? What do you guys think? What do you guys? You guys have you know some of you out there have been had to have thought of making your own comics and stuff. What have you come across? What what feels like it might work good? So what if this one? Let's go a little bit a little a little more radical on this one here. So what if we get rid of the hood? Instantly feels like a <laughs> like a biker, right? And he's gonna have this here. I don't know what his haircut's gonna be, so for now we'll just give him a traditional haircut. Got the big beefy neck. Okay, so what if we get rid of all that? Let's just erase it so we can kind of 
pick the design together here. Alright, we got Comixology, Made Fire, uh, Webcomic, no doubt, uh, Do It on a Manga Schedule, Do It Part of Patreon, Give Him a Demon Hand on Fire with Spikes. <laughs> Pig like to <laughs> sketch like the Mohawk that we had before. So this feels right here again like if I already just change these to sunglasses like he's like a biker or something. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but that's fine. So we can go like this. Um bring that back like that. Gotta get rid of this bandana. I know this white in here kind of makes it a little hard to see some of this stuff, but Alright, so what if he goes here and um, I still want the cape, so the cape that's part of the these guys' design for sure. So we still got the cape going around. Uh, what can we do up here instead of a hood? I know he's a little bit roguish and stuff, remember? Like, do we bring the mat? No, 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 no. That makes him a bad guy right away. Uh, for us, this thing, building a backlog of content to then release on consistent time over whatever we choose, yeah. Uh, there's no crest just yet, but yeah, you're right, like a crest would look real slick right there. Something would look cool just to jazz that up. <sighs> um, I'm going to bring it over the other side here too. Let me just think here, what could we add? So I'm going to grab some reference here just to see if anything jumps out. I'm going to change it up. Uh, one of the, my greatest reference tools that I, I've showed you guys is a video game art book. Uh, this one's actually called uh, Artworks of Tactics Ogre. Fabulous stuff, especially if you like this sort of fantasy design with some of these things um, so again I'm not looking to like copy any of this stuff but sometimes something will pop in here where you're like that's that's a missing piece or that could be the the missing the missing link right that you that you you think might work um, so it's better to get the idea down than to either struggle with it because you don't know where else to go with the design or not getting the idea down so that you don't know if it's a good one or a bad one. Right? A lot of these people have shoulder pads. That's a cool one. That might be a little too flary. Uh, that might be a cool idea if his whole arms were like that. Let's give it one second here. Let's wrap this up. I'm going to try that. Let's try this. This one might actually slim him up a little bit. What if he was born without eyes? Ooh. Listen to this. So there's an idea of like adding a bunch of, uh, uh, sort of like what you guys are talking about too, like things like this, up his arms that would be like blades. Uh, it does make him look a little bit more villainous, a little bit more, you know. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of hesitant on that. You know, because then he'd never be able to hold anybody or, or help anybody up or hug anybody and who knows where the story would need him for that, right? But what if we had... Well, 
this comes down like this. And he wears it across. Feels a little bit more like a Batman cape here, but it's it's cloth. What if we had? Yeah, this might actually look kind of cool. Again, remember when we were talking about the Sub Zero and Scorpion kind of mask? That always looks kind of cool. And somebody brought this up. We did talk about this last week too. The the scarf idea, where it sort of covers his face. Now it could make him look. Like, if you can't see somebody's face, they tend to have, like, a... Something's off, right? Like, if I can't see somebody's face, there's there's a mystery there. Um, but this sort of scarf idea, right? Like, it does stay open. So if we, we can still see him smile and things. And when he needs to really get down to business, when we draw him, right, we can totally just bring that up a little bit more. What if he has a gauntlet that holds all the blades when he takes them out? Other blades. Oh, like a mix. Oh, that'd be cool. Feels a little bit like a duster. Peg leg. How's this guy gonna get around if he's got a peg leg? <laughs> Just a giant peg. That's a poor guy. Okay. Interesting. So apparently I can't draw on anything right now. <sighs> Alright, Photoshop, what's going on here? There we go. And, uh, you know, I'm gonna bring we're gonna bring some of these wrapped likings all the way up here, just to go again with the design of uh, him up top here, and we'll wrap these up as well. This one's a little bit more like a wanderer look, you know. Just missing, it's missing one thing. I'm trying to find it. If you notice, this guy's feet pretty much stay the same. I don't want to add spikes to this character at all. Uh, all right, what can we add here? trying to think hiding stuff Let's bring these down I do like I, I I'm pretty sure somebody said this I could totally have couple knives on his boots here. Just trying to think. What if, what if, what if, what if? Just trying to think where these knives are going to go. I mean, they, there could be a holder in the back. It's not a huge thing. Um, hmm. Give a little samurai ponytail. Alright, well I'm just gonna, I don't wanna... If 
you linger on this stuff too long, sometimes like you're not like in my case, I'm just I'm not drawing, right? I'm just talking. Uh, and that's that's not necessarily a good thing here. So let's just go back here and see what we got. save it up all right so these are the three here so let's see what we've got that we might be able to pull between the two um, I still like you know A's not much of a different deviation from what we already had uh, just, just kind of pushed some of it I do like it uh, B the Skeletor thing ever since somebody said that it's it's hard to not see that uh, the shoulder pad's kind of cool, but it, I don't know. It needs to be designed into something else. And bringing the uh, the cowl of the cape in like that, it's it's definitely like Skeletorish, you know. Uh, see, he's got a fresh look to him. Um, which one kind of like goes back again to what our spec was? You know, like a thief, blind. Uh, he, he's like, if you want to call him a knife mancer, <laughs> a dagger mancer. Which one looks like it could be quick? Like, the guy's not a kung fu martial artist and stuff like that, right? It's not... Uh, he's not a tank. He's not punching dudes. He's not a badass in the... In the uh, if let's, let's try to... Like, if there's a, another character that I could compare him to that I think would be kind of cool. Um, possibly, like, a bullseye or somebody like that that can just throw, you know, like, get those bank shots and just get those really crazy shots. So... Uh, needs to be able to get around and do whatever they want. Uh, so what are you guys saying? So we've got uh, C with B's skirt. Okay. We've got two C's and two A's. C but bald. So I guess, um, you know, Gildas, we already have him somewhat, uh, but this design is going to get pushed over into there. So I guess the next thing I just need to think about is... If this guy was standing next to Gildas, what's Gildas going to look like? He's going to have a lot of chunky armor, like A. Um, these guys are part of, like, we'll call it an order of these guys that go around and they, they slay demons, right? So they have to have a look that's... The thing that, the thing that I do like about C, though, is that it, he... Or the thing that I don't necessarily like about it is that it does look like a wanderer. You know, like, I, I don't see C necessarily in a group unless they all sort of look like this. Kind of like, a, they're sort of like monks in a way. But A, it, it has something to it. Um, although it might be a little bit more of a safe design. They all look kind of safe. Hmm. Dilemmas, dilemmas, dilemmas. All right, well, just for sake of argument, I'll, I'll decide this later. What I'll do, because we've only got 15 minutes left here, we're going to just assume that A is the winning one. So let's jack up the opacity here. Okay, and I'm just going to show you guys what, I, what the next step would be. It's going to be very similar to how we ended the last one. So let's make a new layer. Paste them in there. Okay, let's just make it a little bit bigger. And the, now what we're doing is just tightening it up, but uh, we're not. It's not tight line art. It's just enough so that some of this stuff, like it's pretty, pretty tight in there. I wouldn't really worry about it too, too much. Um, but this just gives us one last shot to sort of tighten up some of these lines and remove some things and add some stuff. And I'm just doing this one with you guys. I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to land on just yet. <laughs> uh, so does the order bring your own stuff or they lay it out for you uh, so the way that it, it's going to work so far is it's pretty much traditional stuff that's like in everything you know like all of them are pretty much either abandoned kids or, or stuff like that so that the, the order that they're in is dying off. It's not really important anymore. 
because all like the 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 big demons have kind of been taken out. Uh, but this wouldn't be that good of a story. All this kick-ass demon started showing up again. Um, and you might have noticed on this guy too that he's got the same scar. Uh, this is sort of like the the rite of passage. There's something that they have to do in order to get this scar. I mean, the first pass that I had, all, all these characters they have, their weapon decides what like rank they are in the order. I don't want any soft edges on this stuff. So the whip is like intro level. So you'd have all the noobs weren't using whips. So we can have this in here. So you can see we're just really just redrawing what we already did. And this is just setting it up for when we get to the color stage in the next one here. Bang this up a little bit more. So next week, what I think we'll do, uh, I don't know how much prep work I'll need to do before the show, but I'm going to pick one of these designs. I might push one or two a little bit more. I'm not sure. We'll have to see how it's going by the time I get to it. But we're going to do like a, a final version, you know, like with... It's, it's very similar to this, but he'll probably be uh, maybe in an action pose or something, you know? Uh, and uh, we can kind of finalize some of the color designs and uh, go from there and this will let us work on Gildas after a while I'm not sure how much of that I'll do with you guys or if I'll just already do that um, I'm hoping by then anyway like the the scripts already gonna be done right and we can hopefully hopefully so work on some freaking comic pages Oh, you're right. Yeah, sorry, Pillow. I didn't even say that. Yeah, sorry, you guys. Totally forgot. Yeah, so tomorrow is October, so <laughs> I would have brought this up in the beginning if I remembered. Uh, yeah, so the first Scribble show of the month is oh, is going to be a critique show. So get your guys' critiques ready. Your stuff that you'd like critiqued, I should say. Bring them out. Oh, that's the worst finger I've ever seen. Just trying to go a little quicker with this here. Uh, no, I, I, I can't. I, I won't be doing a little longer. Sorry. These big old gnarly hands. Yeah, and tell me about it, matter. It does go, it just goes so quick. So, 
So if you guys are getting a little hungry, maybe you guys are interested in what I'm doing here. Uh, I believe Moses has talked, if you wanted more anyway. Uh, just search on YouTube uh, for a video I did called The Butcher King. I believe it's very somewhat similar to uh, last week's episode, but then doing what I'm doing right now, which is a little bit different. It's a little different of a workflow. Uh, you might want to try that one out. If you're still, again, interested in trying this out for your next project, I hope you guys at least get interested to try it. So I'm going to put a little bit of rendering in there, but I'm not going to put it in this one. I'll just break it up a little bit. All right, so he's got his cape coming back here. Kind of, probably French here, fucks up his silhouette because it breaks into his arm like that. Uh, Justin, uh, John, do you do these traditionally first and then digitally? Uh, no, this is all this is all digital, but you can do this traditional as well. Uh, the easiest way would probably probably be to get yourself a light box if you if you, if you prefer. Holy hell! If you prefer traditional art, or maybe that's just a more comfortable workflow for you. Yeah. Um, if you can't afford a light table, just try to get all your light tabling done during the day with uh, just holding it up to a window. And a piece of glass. All right, let's have this busted leg. It's great, um, but yeah, no, I, I prefer digital with this sort of stuff just because I find it's quicker. It doesn't mean that it it is for everybody, but most people, you know, because I can go into color, which we're gonna do right now. I can you know adjust something on the fly, all sorts of stuff. Uh, do I read comics digitally? No, I don't. I, I've tried a couple, but it's I can't do it. I can't really get into it. All right, so here we go. So here would be like the, the line art, you know, for this design here. Uh, so what we'll do is I have an action already set up during the pre-show. If you guys are here, you might have seen me doing it. What it does is it's going to select the entire drawing on this layer that I have and with the magic wand tool. So it's going to select everything inside or outside of these lines. That's why I'm right now I'm just sort of like filling in them, connecting the dots here. And then what it'll do is it'll expand the selection so that it goes inside of the line art a little bit. And then it will invert it. And what inverting it does is now it selects everything that's inside those lines. I know this probably sounds really confusing. Once it has all that, the next thing that it'll do is it'll fill it white. Uh, so what it, the purpose of it is it's a really quick way to do flats. And if you don't know what flats are, flats are your flat color that you would have in a specific area so that when you're doing your shading and coloring or maybe you want to adjust the color you can just very easily select that color and you're good to go so what this will do right now is it just makes it easier to have a bulk selection of this guy almost like a silhouette of him so that I can make quick color changes very quickly and I don't know if we're gonna get time to actually color him like put in there but I want to show you guys at least where what I do to get color um, because I'm not very good <laughs> at picking colors as much. So all the lines should be um, good to go. Uh, actually, whoops, his cape, I forgot the cape. goes on that side. Okay, so that's so I'm going to click my wand tool. I'm going to make it so simple. All layers are off because I just want this one layer. So I'm going to make a selection, and you should see that it's everything outside of him. If it goes in, like right here, you see how we got all the dancing lines around it? That's great, but something in here is messed up that's why I went in there so you just quickly look and right here this little spot gotta fill that in I'll try it again let's do one quick look to make sure everything's good to go which it is gotta select inside here and you guys have seen me do this as well with contour lines I like to get that uh, shape there and actually you know what I might I might do that too but this is what it be so I'm just gonna hit do my action here you're going to see, there you go, so this white is just filled behind him there. So I can use that as like my mask to put everything in to draw that. Uh, the other thing I could do, which is, you know, 
it's just a different way. Is I can do the exact same thing, and I have another one. I think it's F9. It'll do the exact same thing. But what it does is if we zoom in, what it's added is a stroke. I don't even know if you can see it. Yeah, this might have to go into multiply. Yeah, you can't. Well, you can kind of see it. Either way, it doesn't matter. We'll leave it on for now. Okay, so we've got our selection. Now what I would do is, I've talked about this before, but ho if you guys need more help with it, just ask me next week during the critique show. But I'm going to make a new layer above this. I'm calling it our mask because everything inside here is what I want to color. So this layer above it, and this is Photoshop. You can do it with uh, Manga Studio as well. But in Photoshop, if you hold Alt, it'll turn into this little icon. You can click that, and you can see how it has a little arrow. Um, so let's watch. If I go with red, and I'm drawing. Look, I'm still drawing way outside here, and it'll never go in there, right? And this is great for just comic work in general, uh, but it's also really good for this sort of thing here where we're going to be doing uh, some color grabs. So let's save this guy up here. Yeah, there is a female character. Uh, she's not so far in this one. There's a nasty tangent going on with his... His, his uh, face there. Anyway, she will be in the next one. All right, new window. I just got to open this up on the side here, so there's no special stuff. I just got a few minutes here. So what I like to do, let me just turn safe search on. I don't want to get flagged. Okay, so images, safe search. You'd be surprised. I'm, I'm sure you guys are all well aware of safe search. I've had it turned off before, and I would type something like Sky. And wouldn't you believe it? There's probably a porn actress named Sky, and uh, you'll get some, some juicy art that way. So what I do with this stuff is what I'm looking for is color. Uh, there's a few things you can do. You could just swipe it. I don't think there's a problem with that from other people that have colored certain things that you're like, I like the way that's 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 designed. Uh, so what I like to do is usually pick something that's the feel of the character, right? So uh, sadness, you see what comes up, see if there's colors that come in there. So I know this guy's quick, and he's got like a, that dagger sort of stuff, right? Um, so I'm trying to think of something that would be like that. So that might represent sharp... So you guys, if you guys have any words to come up with, feel free to throw them out there. Uh, some sharp, on point. You know, here we can just type in bullseye, and see what comes up. All right, so it's literally a. B <laughs> but you can kind of see where the colors are are going. Like these are horrible colors for sure. I'm not gonna color any of these guys like this. Hmm. Scrolling through, so you never know, you might find something. Yeah, I don't really feel like that. All right, so uh, maybe we can do um, an emotional thing. What would be an emotional thing for this? Sometimes too, you know what, fuck it, we'll just do this. Uh, color palette and see what comes up. Sometimes you get some, some interesting looking colors and stuff. <laughs> Looks like I'm just doing swing and a miss with you guys tonight. See, I kind of actually like that. So I'm going to do this for the sake of uh, this video here. There's nothing. But you can see how there's like a color palette. Oops, let's get rid of that. 
So they've got a color palette on the side here, these these colors here. But there's actually blues and greens in here that you can't really see that aren't in there. And I really like that part of it. So I'm just going to make a selection here. All right, we're going to cut that. Get out of here. Make a new one. Uh, actually, whoops. So I'm going to make a new document here. Put that in there. Now, uh, where is it? It's one of these. I, I, I always forget. It's, I don't really do this that often. So filter, uh, we're looking, uh, I think it's glass. Is it distort? Render. Pixelate. Here we go. I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's crystallize. What it's doing is we're going to take, okay, there we go, we got it. So let me just bring it over here so you guys can see it. So what it's doing is it's it's just adding this weird effect to the whole image, right? But if you jack it all the way up like this, like you see how you're getting a, a, an, in an interesting color palette here. Your, your colors are much different now. Right, so I'm going to zoom out here so I can see. But this would be like what I would use. Those are the only colors I can use, right? We'll say that. But you could also just flick around here and sometimes you'll get some unique colors in there. Um, and this is what what this is doing, right? Like it's showing you for design purposes, usually there's a majority of color in something. So in this case, it's browns, uh, browns and reds. Right, that fade into white. That's the majority of the design. But the accent colors, or the the, I don't know the proper term for this stuff, but like your highlights or your detail areas, can kind of go into these other areas, right? So you've got like, and, and to be fair, a lot of that's already shown here in the composition of this shot. Like more than fifty, I would say maybe sixty percent of this here is browns, right? The other forty is this really nice green and yellow that's in there as well, right? And those are the colors that we're kind of looking for, right? So I'll hit OK with that, kind of like that. So go here, we'll just do it again. Control up, uh, Control all copy, and then we're gonna go Control paste, right? So now this would be my working palette that I would that I would pull colors from. Um, so let's do this really quickly here. So what's gonna be the, the overall color of him? I really don't worry about the skin color. Uh, because skin color is like a faded neutral tone so it doesn't generally matter unless this guy was blue or something like that right however since this guy's got so much skin showing you know like right like I would say 40% of his design is flesh right I'm gonna want to start with that just as like the flat tone so we'll see which one kind of sings to us here right like is he a black guy is he a white dude And you can see where the colors are going here. Like we got some purples and, and some oranges and stuff. Like it's really nice. So this feels like no, oh, that's gross. We'll stick with this one here. I'm just gonna merge it down here. Okay, so what we're going to do here, actually, sorry, I just <laughs> totally forgot. I'm going to kill the stream, uh, and everybody that's in the room or whatever, we can stick around. And what you saw me do is I'm just going to go in here, and I'm going to add a little more detail to the or colors and spots, just like how I'm sort of doing it now, right? Uh, but we'll do that with the outro. Uh, we'll play the, 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 the song <laughs> for the end of the night there. And... Uh, yeah, so everybody that's watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave a comment below for anything you'd like to see for new content and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, if you have anything that you'd like to have critiqued, please uh, send me an email or whatever and we can do it on the show as well. That'll be for next week. And everybody that's in the chat, if you guys are interested in the critiques as well, that is next week. So show up with uh, your art in hand and hopefully we can do some stuff to help you out there. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. 
keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.